focused on print and pattern these last couple of weeks. And since I haven't done a print tutorial in a really long time, I figured this week is gonna be a great week for that. One of the things I've noticed about working with patterns in Photoshop is that repeats can be really challenging, particularly half drop repeats. And everybody has their own method. So today, what I'm gonna show you is the method that I use now after seeing many variations um, that I feel is the best and most efficient that you can use without a plugin. I'm starting with a small clump of flowers that I'm using as my repeat. Each flower is on a different layer, which is great if I need to make changes, but having the multiple layers makes my next steps more difficult if I wanna keep them that way. So to make the motifs easy to work with, but keep the maximum editability, I'm going to make this into a smart object. Smart objects are truly my secret weapon in this whole process. They're layers that preserve the original characteristics of an image. So if you need to combine multiple images, but still keep the layers separate to continue editing them later, a smart object is exactly what you need. To create your smart object, select the topmost layer you want to combine, hold the shift key, and click on the last layer to be combined. Holding the shift key will select all the layers in between the top and bottom two. If all your layers are not consecutive, click each individual layer while holding the control or command key instead. Once your layers are selected, right mouse click and choose Convert to Smart Object. To create the repeat, I'm going to use a filter called Offset. But before I do that, I need to know the size of the image. Go to Image, Image Size, and record the pixel dimensions of your file. Write that down somewhere and then hit Cancel to exit that window. Center your Smart Layer on the page using Smart Guides or the Align icons in the Options bar. And then, create a copy of the Smart Object layer. Next, go to Filter, Other, Offset. The first thing you're going to do is create the vertical drop. And to do this, you need to change the vertical number to half the pixel dimensions of the length of the image. For this print, half the size is 1101 pixels. Also, make sure that Wrap Around in the Undefined Areas section is selected. Then, press OK. Next, duplicate the original smart object and go to Filter Offset again. Create the half drop by typing half the pixel dimensions of the width of the image in the horizontal box and a quarter of the total pixel dimensions of the length in the vertical box. Duplicate the original smart object and go to Filter Offset one last time. The horizontal pixels will stay the same number as the previous step and the vertical will also stay the same number, except it will move in the opposite direction. To do this, put a minus in front of the number and press OK. At this point, your artwork is already in repeat. So if you're happy with the placement of the motifs, you can simply define and save the pattern. But if you wanna make some changes, this is when the smart objects really come in handy. And because you duplicated the smart objects, all you would need to do is click on any one of those layers and once you save your changes, it will update all of the layers. One of the things I do so I can see the print repeating is save the repeat by going to Edit, Define Pattern. Then I'll create a new document and test the pattern by going to the new fill layer icon, the black and white cookie, and choosing Pattern. Photoshop will default to showing the last saved pattern and I'll be able to see my new pattern repeating across the page. This is when I decide if I need to make any edits or not. So if I see something I wanna change, I'll go back to my repeat file and double click the thumbnail of any of the smart objects. A new file will open with all of the motifs in their original layers. And now you can move, rotate, resize, add or delete anything you want. And each time the file is saved, the placement of the motifs update in the repeat file on all layers. To make it easier to see how your changes affect the overall repeat, detach the smart object file from the main window so it's floating next to the canvas of the repeat file. 
each time you make a change and save the smart object, you'll be able to see your repeat file update. Once you're satisfied with your changes, define and save the pattern again. Switch to the file you had open with the first repeating pattern. Double click the first thumbnail of the pattern fill layer and select the new pattern you just saved and the updated print will appear on the canvas. As I said before, there are many different ways that you can create your repeats and I've seen and tried a lot of them. But by far, this has been the fastest and most efficient method that I've used. One quick note I wanted to add, Adobe is currently working on a plugin that will help you create your repeats as well as recolor your artwork and create production ready color separations. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can sign up to use the beta version right now. And I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Keep in mind it is a beta version, but hopefully a final version will be released early next year. Now the plugin will not be free, but from what I've seen, if you're a textile designer and you're creating repeats and color separations and production artwork all the time, it may be worth it to pay for it. But if you're looking for a method to use in the interim, or you're looking for a method that won't be an additional expense, this is a great option for you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you next time.